What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series, we are going to be going over improved networking and traveling in sessions. So I'm setting my game up to run two standalone instances. When we come into the game here, we're gonna have one as the host and one as the client. So for the first one, we will have our host. That would be this top left one here. So I'll go down to online and host the game. For the second one, we will have the client. So we're going to go to that window, go down to online and join the game. Join a session. We have our session list pop up here. Once our pop-up occurs and says that we have found one result, we're gonna scroll down to it and confirm it. This will allow us to join the session. You can see that the travel successful says one. So our traveling was successful. Basically what this means is we were able to travel to the server, to the IP address that we added. You're not really going to notice anything different here when we come into the game. However, because we're at different levels here, you will see that the client actually gets kicked back to the main menu. Right there, and now you can see that everything is working as intended. This sort of thing will make more sense what the usage of travel is when you see us moving from level to level. But really know that right here what we're doing is making sure we can actually connect between these instances. That way we can bring up the lobby section or simply the character select screen for both the server and the client. And that will be their first point of contact before entering the actual match. Before we hop into this episode, if you want to get caught up in this series so you can check out how to actually implement a fighting game of your own, please feel free to click on the link in the top right corner right here to go to the entire fighting game tutorial series. Alternatively, if you're only interested in the online play, that's perfectly fine. I do recommend you start from episode one of the online play because these are all building on top of each other. So I will link you to the first episode where we went over creating and hosting sessions in our fighting game tutorial series. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We're going to be doing everything in the code today. Then we'll be doing some blueprint cleanup as well as an added bonus. First thing we want to do is go to the code. Once we're in the code, we want to go to our base game instance, and specifically, we want to go to our base game instance.h. In here, we want to scroll down to our functions, and we're going to make a new function for traveling. I put it under my join session completed, and I called it bool travel to session. As the comment says, travel to the joined session and return to true if successful. As I alluded to earlier, when we're traveling here, we're actually traveling off of a hard-coded name that we set up in the other episodes. So we're not traveling to the joined session. We're technically traveling by name, which just happens to be the joined session. When we finish up our session list and that is fully functional, then this comment will be completely accurate. We will be traveling to the joined session, but just be aware, you're not technically paired at this exact moment. Anyway, bool travel to session. Once we make this function, we can go to the base game instance.cpp and scroll down to where we want to add that function. I put it right at the bottom. So bool u base game instance colon colon travel to session. As with all of our other online functions, I'm going to do the same thing here where I check for the online subsystem first and foremost. We need the online subsystem so that we can actually access online services and functionality. And then if this is valid, so if I online subsystem pointer, I'm calling it online subsystem equals I online subsystem colon colon get. If this is valid, we will go into the if statement and I want to check to see if we can get our online session interface. The online session interface also has to be valid for us to do a lot of this because the online session interface has functions that we're going to need for hosting, joining, and in this case, getting the connection string so that we know actually where to travel the client to. If I online session pointer, online session interface equals online subsystem, arrow get session interface. Assuming the session interface is also valid, we now want to get the connection string. The session interface has a way to do this and it's called get resolved connect string. Basically what it's going to do is find a session based on the name and then grab the connection info from it. The connection info in this case is mainly the IP address. It can have things related to the platform as well. If the platform has a different standard 
for the information that it returns, it will be contained within the string as well. The way this works is when you call this function, you give it a name of a session and it returns the data into this string. So we need to make a string for the data to be returned into. So f string connection info. Then we want to call this function online session interface arrow get resolved connect string. Again, this is where we pass the name of the session in. So I'm going to use the same session name that I've used for joining sessions right here, as well as hosting sessions right here. Now, this is what I was mentioning earlier. We're hard coding these names. We shouldn't really be doing that. I was doing that for proof of concept. We should be grabbing the name of the session when we're finding them. Very nearly at that point where we can actually make that work without hard coding this. That will actually be part of our session list. So don't worry about this too much for now. Just make sure you're following the same exact name that you put for the other ones. So F name in parentheses quotes my game session. Then for the next parameter is our connection info string that we made so the data can be passed into it. I put this whole thing inside of an if statement because the function itself get resolved connect string returns a boolean to determine if it was able to retrieve that connection string. If it wasn't for any reason, then we don't want to try and connect to it. We don't want to travel the client there because say it's an empty IP address that's nowhere. In fact, it's probably going to cause an error. If this doesn't return true, then we don't know that it's safe to travel here. So we're not going to. If it does return true, however, we can go into this if statement. And in here is where we're actually going to travel the client to the server. So as I keep mentioning, traveling the client is different than joining a session. Joining a session is making that connection between the two. Whereas traveling the client is actually making the client attached to a different IP address or a map that Unreal has. So assuming we get that string, we need a player controller to travel that client because client travel is done through the player controller. And we can just get our first player controller. This is a safe operation in most of networking because it is assumed that the first player controller or the first player is the one handling the travel. So we want to just make an a player controller pointer. I'm just calling it player controller. We're going to get world and get the first player controller. Simple enough, and then we want to use that player controller variable and call client travel on it. Client travel requires two parameters, and it has some additional optional parameters as well, but it requires a URL and a travel type. Again, the URL can be a map or it can be an IP address. In this case, we're going to pass along connection info, and this is going to be an IP address. Then we're going to use this enum value for our travel type, travel underscore absolute. This means any previous parameters in the URL for the client are going to be completely wiped. This is important and you'll get to see why these URLs and these strings are important in traveling as we continue working on the game. Think of it this way, if you had some sort of rolling lobby and the teams were already set beforehand and you wanted to keep those parameters, you could use travel underscore relative to make sure that some of that data was brought along on each travel. There's a very good chance that we're going to want to use that in the series more than travel absolute. After this, I'm going to return true because this function returns a Boolean. If we're able to call client travel, we're going to return true for now. Else, if we weren't able to resolve the connection string, we'll hit this else statement. And I'm going to return false because the connection information could not be obtained. Quick note about this. You don't technically have to return false here. I'm returning false at the end of the function. So if we don't hit the return true, we would hit this one anyway. But we might want to do additional logic in the future, say pop up a message to the user if this connection string fails to be resolved. So I'm just tracking it separately. Also, if you're hitting this else statement and you don't know why, you can print out this connection info with a gengine add on screen debug message or UE log like we do for a lot of our networking stuff. I'm not going to do that on this video because it does have the IP address, but you can do that to make sure that it is what you would expect. And then you can compare that with your own IP address, which by the way, you can check by running a command prompt. So in Windows, you can search command prompt. Then you just type IP config and press enter. Now, after your if statements at the very end of the function, I just returned false. The client was unable to travel. We may not be entirely sure why, because we didn't go and add an else statement to each individual if statement and determine where it failed, but we do know it failed for some reason. Now at this point, I want to call this travel to session function so we can scroll up to our join session completed function. And immediately after join session is completed, I'm going to call travel to session. 
There could be times where you want to join and not travel right away, but we're just going to assume that we do for now. So once join session was completed, we were printing out the join result. We were going and making sure we had our session interface, our subsystem, and we were clearing the handle because at this point the join operation has finished. Once we do this, I'm going to call my travel to session. So attempt to travel the client to the server. We're going to call it travel to session and we're going to capture the result by making a Boolean value and setting it equal to that function. So bool was travel successful equals travel to session. Afterward, I've added some logs just to check my traveling to see if the traveling has worked. So we have gengine add on screen debug message, ID of five, time of 30 seconds, color of cyan, and for my string, I say travel is successful, percent %d, percent %d is decimal. This means I can return something like an integer into that. And a Boolean can be represented as an integer with false being zero and one being true. Actually printing out the value of a Boolean is slightly more complicated than that in my opinion, so it's easier just to treat it as an integer. But if you're familiar with how to print this as a Boolean, you can definitely do that. Then we need to pass in the parameter that we want to print in this percent %d. And I'm printing my was travel successful Boolean. The UE log is the same. I'm printing to log temp with warning, which will make the text yellow. But otherwise, I have the same string. The reason that we have both these logs here, if you don't remember, is the UE log will print to the Unreal Engine log and logs generated by your project, like in package builds. but Adding the on-screen debug message will be easier to test with. And if you're running two standalone instances from Unreal like I was at the start of this episode, I can see them right on the screen. I also want to add a note about our G engine add on-screen debug messages that we have in all of our networking functions so far. So I'm gonna to go to my host session function and go to any logs I have in here. This first parameter here is your ID. It's where it should display on that list on the screen. So earliest ID like zero is going to be the highest and lower IDs will appear after. I put them all as zero though and I was just commenting them out for the purposes of the video but at this point I'm trying to follow the whole path. So I just want to make a quick addition to this. It can be zero for the host both the host sessions because we'll either get a session has been created or a session has failed to be created. But for example when we go to search for sessions which we could do after hosting one we don't want to override the old log or rather not display this new log just because they have the same ID. So I'm updating the ID to be one. So one for both of your search sessions. For search for sessions completed, I have two. For join session, I have three. For join sessions completed, I have four. For my travel session, I have five. You could also use negative one to just always use the next spot. I just wanted to point that out in case you're curious as to why your logs may not be showing up even though you know you have them in your code. So we're good to go here. Now let's go ahead and launch the editor again. Once the editor is open, I do want to go to my session list widget. And once we're in here, I want to now remove the temporary elements we have. It makes sense for a navigation purpose why we want this, and we are going to want the functionality that we have, but I no longer need to test this. I know my session list navigation works, and now I'm all about efficiency and quickness to be able to test this because networking is difficult and long to test. So I'm just going to go into my sessions vertical box and just delete every single one that is in here by default because I don't need them. They're going to be generated. Now when I play my game, only the actual sessions will show up here, and that's what we want. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today, so thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and I hope this helped you work on traveling sessions, online lobbies, and just improving your online gameplay in general. If it did and you want to support the channel, please subscribe. It's free, and it does more for the channel than anything else you can do. Plus, I really appreciate it. If you do want to support the channel further, you can check out the Patreon, YouTube membership, or Discord subscriptions. If you ran into any trouble while following this tutorial, or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you out, and that support is completely free. Otherwise, guys, that's all I got, so thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys. Mm -hmm.